Mafia Magazine Radio. Hello, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on, P? Is that you? Yeah, this is Cousin P. I barely can hear you. Hold on for a second. How about now, baby? Yeah, you'll sound a little bit clearer. All right, hold on for a second. Let me set you up real quick. For all my listeners out there, man, I got the opportunity to sit down with one of our up-and-coming sensational artist along with being a businessman and uh, he goes by the name of cousin p and we're gonna sit down with cousin p for a little while man he's gonna let us know how the industry treating him in his side of town so 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 p baby what's good baby how, how life treating you these days uh not much man bless you know every day i wake up that's a blessing i'm talking about no doubt you know what i'm saying so 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 first of all let us know man exactly where you originally from and um, how long you been doing the things you've been doing? All right, uh, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. You know what I mean? Born and raised there. I came to Sacramento, California when I was 17 to get a change of uh, lifestyle. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, I started really taking music seriously when I came out to California in 2003 because, like, my uncles was doing music and my cousins. Now they're no longer doing it. I'm, like, the only one taking it seriously. So that's, like, pretty much my background on that. Yeah, no doubt. So, so... So you, when you first came into the game, you came into the game with a couple of other cats, didn't you? Yes, I did. That which was uh, Cal Biz, uh, my cousin uh, Darnell, which goes by the name of D Glory. I forgot he's doing gospel music right now as we speak. So he kind of switched over to Brady and gave his life to Christ. Okay. And my uncles uh, Adam and Jimmy, they never really. They felt like they got too old. They got to a point that they were too old. They still had to love for it, and they just you know laced our shoes on you know how to write your bars and deliver. Make sure you're not cramming the words in and stuff like that. So when you're on stage performing, you can move around and still have your breath as you perform. <laughs> so, so, so actually, man, they gave you gave you a couple of lessons, man, on actually how to actually deliver your music. You know what I'm saying? And um, yes. and a lot of people don't know how very important that is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you might you might have you might have the dopest lyrics in the world, but if you ain't got no delivery, then you just another cat off the corner. You know what I mean? Bingo. Yeah, no doubt about that. You know what I'm saying. So, what was the what was the name of the crew, man? When you first started out, you know what I'm saying. I mean, uh, in your, I seen it in your bio, and um, it was you guys had a crew along with the entertainment um company, didn't you? Yes. Well, my uncle he still doing it. His is called Big Out of Records, but I don't think he's doing anything with it. So I started my own uh money changing hands entertainment. The group was called. Corner Boys, which is our last name. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and then everybody just went their separate ways. And when I was in Detroit, I was in a group called Why Not See that was young and, you know, the N word in charge. But, you know, <laughs> once I came out here, I'm still like the one out of everybody that's really trying to push that issue. Yeah, no question about that. So tell us, man, we, I got a couple of people tweet me right now, man. And they all curious to find out where did the moniker of Cousin P come from? That name came about, my nickname is Peebo. Okay. I got that name, I guess, back when I was younger. I like telling people this, but back when I was younger, I used to kill myself and my uh, <laughs> sister used to always tease me. So that's how I got the name Peebo. Okay. I came out here, I stayed with my auntie and her, her five kids, which is my cousin. My cousin Kaya just started calling me Cousin Pete. Right. So I figured that name sound that name sound well better than the name I was going with before, which was Taz. Right. My motto is Cousin P. I want to become one with my music. I want to become a part of your family with my music. Okay, no doubt about that. So, P. Man, tell us, man, like, like you know what I'm saying? Where you actually derive your material from in the music that you make all, every day? It all depends on, like, although, like, like I said before, my uncles, although they don't take it serious, they still give me tough steps. Like my uh, Uncle Adam, if you hear any songs that's, like, got that R&B feel and it's talking about relationships, yeah. that comes from my Uncle Adam. Just based on, he's been around longer than me, so he experienced way more things than me. He can put it to music and give me that concept, but then I just start writing off that. Right, 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 right. So, 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 so that's where the material came from on your last album or your last mixtape. Yes, it's, just, it's, it's a mix of everybody. I, I like when I did, when I go in the studio, I record in my house. It could be anywhere from just me and uh, Adam, or it could be five or six people. We put on a beat and we come up with that hook. Once I got the hook, and after that, I can I write my own lyrics. But just get, getting that concept because the average person who listens to music, right. the only thing they really hear is the beat and the hook. Right. If, that, if that's not going, then you might as well not even put a song out. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, no doubt about that. So, so P, you consider yourself, I, you know what I'm saying, like, break it down for us, man. Let us know, man, what it is, man, and whether you feel like you're a rapper or a lyricist, you know what I'm saying, and, and or what you may call yourself, you know what I'm saying? So give us a little insight, man, on exactly, man, how you feel about that, on, on how you would be labeled. I, feel, I could say 
for me, I really not say too much of a, a lyricist, uh, a rapper. You can say that. I can say just call me an artist. Don't put me in a box. Right. Because I'm like, I'm like, just that. That's what I want to just label myself as, as as an artist. I don't really say I'm a lyricist because as I listen to Common and and, and artists like that, I'm still trying to get on that level. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like I'm a realist. I just speak, speak the real. Like you'll get a, if you get listen to a cousin speak mixtape, you get everything from not just you know the street side. But the relationship side, being in love, getting your heartbreak, I talk about everything. Right, no doubt. So, so coming up, man, when you first started doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? Who, who was the person or persons, somebody that you actually kind of was listening to or was inspired by to make you say to yourself, um, "I can do that," and not only can I do that, but I can do that well. That number one person is still my favorite rapper and, and, and my idol. And that's Master P. Okay. And I've I've been a No Limit fan. I got every album you can possibly <laughs> name. You the new stuff that he's coming out with. And the thing I liked about him was he was a hustler. Right. Although now Master P may drop an album and it don't go go. Even if it go go, he still he still has money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like no he taught me if you get in the door, don't just focus on one thing. Put start touching everything else because. Music might not last forever, and that's just like, you know, that's what he taught me every day. I never met the man, but that's what I got from him. Right. And his music, when once again, you can get a Master P album and it make you want to go ride on somebody, then you talk about Mr. Homies and stuff like that. So that's what I like to keep that guy so much. No doubt about that. And so here's something a lot of people don't know, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Early in the game, you had to kind of home in, or you had to kind of tighten up your business aspect of your game. You heard? And, um, yeah, mo- mo- most definitely. Well, 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 let us know, man, about how that all came about, man, and, and, you know, the struggle that you had to go through to actually put it all together. You know what I'm saying? The main thing was, it's like, you know, everybody wanted to do music now. Now, you have some people that like to take advantage of other people who really don't know the music aspect of it. Right. As far as, in like, copywriting your music and, and stuff like that. And, and some people who've been in the game for a while that can hear something and know they can make money off that song and, like, sell you dreams. Right. I never really experienced anything like that. I always look at, you know, when I'm watching BT and behind the scenes, how most artists always get taken care of. And when someone's famous that's there that where I'm trying to get to, when they say make sure you do your homework, the business industry is 90% business and 10% talent. If you already are, if I'm watching you on TV and you tell me that I'm going to take heed to what you're saying. Right. That's just me. I, if someone tells me something, I, I'm, I'm going to listen, especially if you're in a position where I'm trying to be. Yeah. No doubt. So, so was it hard to actually transition from being from when you first started out? Was it was it was it a really heavy transition to go from being an artist and putting your music on records along with actually being able to sit back and kind of understand the business aspect of what you need to do with your music once you put it down? Yes, most most definitely. That I'm, I'm still struggling with that still to this day because I'm like I want to be just you know going to lab and do music and not worry about everything else. Right but now that I have to focus more on my the business aspect, that takes away from a lot for me recording. Like especially me doing everything as far as like promotion and stuff like that, it takes a lot away from doing music. Now I understand when artists when artists first come out and you hear them and they're very very tight, and then once they start getting famous and you start listening to their music, like man. The old stuff is pretty good because now they're more focused on the business part and right. not the music. And right. it's very, very hard. I'm still trying to juggle that as we speak. Well, it's definitely a juggle. You already, you already know that. You know what I'm saying? So, so, mm-hmm. uh, so, okay. So tell us, man, like, you know, what your, your album that came out, you know, give us a little insight on, on actually who's on it, who helped contribute to it. You know what I'm saying? And actually what, what about the title of it? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, give us a little insight on all, how all that went down. Okay, it depends on what album you're speaking about. I don't say album mixtape because I got a mixtape called out. It's, uh, it's not how much you make, it's how you spend it. Or the one that's dropped in uh, January 21st, Born Real, Not Perfect. I always felt like the titles, I always felt like for me, the titles were the first person. See, I'm not just going to give it a title, hey, I'm rich or I'm black. I want to put me behind it. So when you look at it, it makes you think, it makes you want to, even if you never heard of me, just based off the title, make you want to grab and listen to it just because of what the title says. No oh, doubt. Now, everybody that's on the album is anywhere from Stax, Cal Beers, uh, Young Versus, uh, Adam is just a bunch of mix of pretty much the people that I deal with. The beats that I get from is like mostly like off sound clicks. I deal with like a bunch of uh, different producers like Rio, 
uh, Mario. It's just like a bunch of different producers that I deal with, but those two particular are the most ones that I deal with. But pretty much everybody that's on the album is just strictly sampling. I don't really too much deal with other artists i just stay with them <laughs> well let me tell you something you i can actually hear that as you be speaking i can actually hear that in your voice man on how you know what i'm saying it sounds like to me how you keep it tight around your camp and you you know what i'm saying and you keep everything close to the vest you know what i'm saying and and you know yeah. you keep those around you that you can trust you know what i'm saying and if they're not really in the, you know what i'm saying if they're not really in the Bingo. family then you keeping them you know what i'm saying at arm's left you heard Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. So, w what's the videos, man? Give us a little insight, man, on on your videos, man, and 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 how those came about, man. You know what I'm saying? And some of the concepts, or who may have bought you some of the concepts, man, to help you derive some of the movies. I mean, some of the videos that you be getting done. The, the videos. I actually, only got three videos, and I got three more that's in the work. As Anthony Chelsea Productions. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy, I I I, I, I let a guy to death. Uh, the first video we did was across the room. The concept is actually he comes up with it. I give him the music and I sit back and let him do whatever it is he want to do. He's more of a producer, not the type. Though, okay, this is your beat. You're gonna put you in front of a car right here. Then we'll have you walking out of black and change the outfit. Then when you when you mess with Anthony Shelton, your video shoots is gonna last anywhere from eight to twelve hours doing different things like you are already famous because he, he's a perfectionist. So, so I just give him my music and whatever he see in it, I just go along with it. Oh, okay. So I'm quite sure you got some input in that also, don't you? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It might be a particular... if, 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 it's, if, it's, if it's something I don't like, but when you work for someone with so long and they understand you and they understand their music and they know the boundaries to go and whatnot, I just let you do you and get your creativity outside. Like, for instance, like he do, he, I don't, I feel like if it's something I don't like, I tell, but he understands me as a person. Yeah. So I'm like, I let you do, you hear my music, I let you, whatever vision you see, go for it. Right. So that, that's, that's your profession. That's what you do. Like, if you come to the studio, let me do what I do. I don't need your input because you don't do music. <laughs> so, so tell us, man, you just, you've been doing a couple of shows lately, man. How's, how's that been going, man? How's, how's your shows been going? I, I mean, I've been getting good feedback, man, about the things you've been doing. You know, they've been hitting me up, letting me know, man, that cousin P is out there killing them. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, give us a little insight, man, on, on how you feel, man, when you get on stage, man, and you're doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, do, do you kind of morph into somebody else? I mean, you know, give us an insight on, you know, what P do when he do his thing. No, nah, like the, the, the tripped out part about it. Before I before I perform, I'm always nervous. In the moment I open my mouth, all that nervousness come out. The thing I always, when I'm performing, I always typically when you go perform anyway, it's, it's mostly rappers. But I always like to do R and B songs, which I can stand out from the crowd. Because right. if you got three or four people ahead of you and everybody rocking Nikes and rap and talking about within the same subject, but they only feeling the how they want to speak about it, it's kind of hard to cipher. You know different people out so me every song i do when i perform i gotta make sure i have an r&b hook to it so at the end of the day if it's 12 people and everybody else rapping and they rapping their hooks you're going to remember me because i'm the only person music that turns out to be different and besides that females like to hear stuff that they can sing along with and i was just getting ready to say so you kind of beat me to the punch because that's what it sounded like to me you, you sound like to me that you don't figure it out you know what i'm saying and like not only need you do <laughs> Not only do you need to do your music, but you also need to include, you know what I'm saying, some parts of it, man, where, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be a, a, a very receptive from a lot of women, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, and we Bingo. already know who buy the most music, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> so, you know what I'm Bingo. saying, yeah, so, so you know what I mean, that's that's a beautiful thing, man, that uh, you was able to figure that out, you know what I'm saying, early in the game, you know, so, uh, yeah, so here's a question I got for you, man. You know, like, you're doing your thing already, you're doing your music and all that. Five years down the line, you know what I'm saying, whether it be three to five years down the line, man, when we look when we look three to five years down the line, man, you know what I'm saying, what should we be looking for Cousin P to be labeled as? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you know, when we speak of Cousin P, man, what's the thoughts going to come to our mind, man, when we're talking about you? I feel like the thoughts that I'm trying to put into people's mind when, when my name arises is just that artist that gives you that music from like back in the 80s when you can get an album and you can listen to it where you can get knowledge from, make you want to dance, make you want to laugh, put you in deep thought, give you food for thought. Mm -hmm. Five years from now where I see myself, if God's willing and music is what my calling is to do, hopefully just being successful and feeding my family. Yeah. That's my goal. And be able to go into any store, whether it's a mall or whatever, and be able to pick up a cousin PC and not just get it 
online. That's where I see myself in five years, as far as my music wise. If it's guys, that that's the vision that God has for me to do. No doubt. For all my listeners out there, we got the opportunity right now to sit down with Cousin P. And Cousin P is letting us know, man, how he getting down, you know what I'm saying, and the things that he do to make sure his music get done. Hey, P, man, so so here's another thing. Before we go, you know what I'm saying, I, I want to give you the opportunity to plug and shout out everything and everybody, man, that's helped you get to the point to where you are today. The, the first person I, I definitely got a shout out to be Tanya Green. If she's listening, I love you. Big shout out. She's the one who introduced Tanya Green. She she introduced me into uh, Mafia Magazine, and I, I wish her much success with her book that's uh, already out. Yeah. Tupac equals the Outlaws. Mike, Mike and Men. Mm -hmm. I, I respect her for that. And my family that, you know, everybody that got the last name Connor or affiliate with us, <laughs> I just want to say thank you. But most of all, my fans, the people who I actually mail CDs out to, who give me their addresses and I mail them copies of my mixtapes or give me their email addresses and I email them uh, copies of my songs and stay up to date, I would just like to, like to thank them. And Elizabeth out there in St. Louis, I just want to say thank you guys with all my heart. Yeah, no doubt. For all my listeners out there, once again, you heard it first right here on Mafia Magazine. I'm your host, Sangria, the field marshal, and uh, I want y'all to stay around. Y'all stay locked in, man, because we getting ready to bang some of this Cousin P music, man, for him to let you know how he getting down and the things that he do. Hey, P, baby, it was beautiful that you came out, man, and you spent your time with us, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, once uh, again, man, no doubt, baby, and if there's anything that Mafia can do, you know what I'm saying? Oh, another thing, man, for all my listeners out there, make sure you go get the new issue of Mafia magazine, because... Uh, oh, no doubt, because Cousin P is in the magazine, baby, you know what I'm saying? And he going to really, really get in depth with you on about how his career has evolved to what it is today, man. This was just a little short tidbit of what the man does, you know what I'm saying? But P, baby, mm -hmm. hey, man, listen, man, um, once again, man, you stay blessed, and may you always you. prosper in the things that you do, you heard? Same with you, man, and everybody out there have a safe and a safe and positive New Year's. I love y'all. No doubt, baby. Happy New Year's to everybody, and y'all stay locked in, baby. We got some Cousin P coming right at you, baby. Hey, P, baby, God bless you, man, and yeah. uh, Happy New Year's to you, all right? You too, man. One love. One love, baby. Peace.